So hello, everybody. Welcome to this fifth panel of the today's civil society forum. And this is a panel dedicated to the question of digitalization, cybersecurity, and data protection. Um, first of all, welcome to all participants. And uh, thanks, many thanks to the organizers for organizing this panel, especially in this composition. I'm really curious to 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 listening or yeah to to have this discussion, and um, about uh, the challenges we are facing uh, in in uh, regards to to the mentioned topic. And uh, first of all, before. I come to our panelists and uh, the welcome, of course. Uh, just a few remarks um, to, to the audience. Uh, due to the uh, time constraints we have, we have a discussion of about 60 minutes. Uh, we will hear, have first an input by uh, Danilo Krivokapic about the political recommendations of the first civil society forum held at the beginning of June uh, on this topic. And afterwards, I will ask uh, State Secretary Banner. Uh, as well as uh, Mr. Vesovic uh, from the Chamber uh, of um, the Serbian Chamber of Industry um, to, to comment on these recommendations. Uh, all panelists are asked to, to have an input of about maximum five, five minutes. And then we will also ask you as the audience to give us uh, questions and remarks, especially questions uh, through the um, Q&A function, or you can also raise your hand and uh, we will uh, to pose any questions and we will uh, open up your mic uh, without any video. But now starting with the panel, because it did, I mentioned we have some time constraints, uh, please welcome with me our panelists, uh, State Secretary for Public Administration, Digital Society and Media, uh, Ms. Marina Banovic. Uh, great to have you here. And maybe just to mention at the very beginning, Montenegro has a special um, uh, obligation, I would say, or pleasure to, uh, this year to help uh, the digital summit uh, for the Western Balkans. So perfect uh, to have you here and uh, to, to get you in this discussion. And uh, also many thanks and welcome to Danilo Krivokapic, uh, the director of the SHARE Foundation, which is promoting digital rights and uh, much more in the region and who is the facilitator uh, of the working group on uh, digitalization, as I understood, and he will explain to us uh, the recommendations and um, I'm really looking forward to this one. And uh, last but not the least, please welcome with me Mr. Mihalo Vesovic, who is the Director of the Sector for Strategic Analysis, Services and Internationalization of the uh, Chamber uh, of Commerce uh, and Industry uh, in Serbia, which is also part of the Chamber's Investment Forum uh, of the Western Balkans. So um, again, Welcome to you all. And without any further ado, I would like to give you the floor, Danilo, for uh, the uh, uh, for your intervention and um, the recommendations uh, the working group or the CSF actually has produced on this topic. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Anya. I have to say I had a great discussion with my colleagues from the whole region, and together we, we made this recommendation. Uh, let me just uh, briefly say that uh, something that is completely evident and that, uh, that is that there are no longer borders between uh, a material and digital world. Uh, this was uh, this became even more evident during uh, COVID-19 pandemics and uh, all countries in, in our region are, are making strong digital efforts and there's practically no going back and I think it, it should stay like that. Uh, what is politically important is to say that uh, at the Western Balkan Summit in Sofia in November last year, uh, a consensus was reached that uh, strong digitization, digitalization efforts are necessary in order to bring all these countries closer to European Union. And now uh, this digitalization comes with many benefits. Some of them are uh, that around 50% less time is spent in interaction with public institutions and around 50% uh, less uh, uh, money is spent for the companies when interacting with public uh, institutions. But uh, my, uh, my role is to talk a bit more about uh, challenges of digitalization. And of course, one of the main challenges are issues concerning uh, uh, personal data. So uh, all countries in the region 
paste uh, uh, massive data leaks or, or data bridge, breaches. And uh, uh, let me just name a few from the Ser from Serbia, such as publishing of uh, data of five million citizens on the official website or uh, uh, publishing credentials for, for the COVID-19 system uh, and so on and so on. And uh, what is important to say, this is something that we call uh, clumsy digitalization. So uh, good intentions, but uh, not enough knowledge in, this, in these areas. Uh, uh, what is the really important thing to do is uh, uh, working on the legal framework, uh, European Union has very good, maybe the best in the world legal framework regarding uh, data protection, and uh, some countries already aligned uh, their laws with European Union. Some of them uh, stated in, in their strategy that they are going to uh, make new laws in accordance with, with these from European Union, because this is the golden standard when it comes to uh, data protection. What is also very important is accountability. So uh, each time when there was some data leak or data breach, there was almost never uh, uh, accountability and uh, we never had any serious fines or, or something like that. Uh, what are other really important uh, challenges and, and opportunities is when you talk about open data. So. Uh, this is one of the main opportunities uh, when, when we were talking about digitalization in public services because uh, economic value of open data estimates uh, around 184 billion uh, euros at the moment. So this is a great economic opportunity. Uh, on the other hand, one of the main challenges is uh, digital literacy, which is one of the main prerequisites in order to have efficient uh, digital services. Uh, uh, it is a problem that there are no uh, comparative data when it comes to digital literacy, literacy in the region, but uh, uh, some, uh, uh, some report says that around 50% of uh, citizens in Serbia are digitally illiterate, and it shouldn't be much different in the other countries in the region. Also, one of the uh, main uh, challenges is uh, user Centricity. So, in order to have uh, efficient uh, e-services, you need to have uh, uh, applications and services that are as easy as, example, uh, e-banking and, and other services uh, that we have. Uh, when it comes to uh, all these recommendations that we made, I won't go into all of them, they're all published, but let me just make, um, uh, state the most important ones. The first is that uh, Western Balkan government should adopt comprehensive legal framework in the field of digitalization and data protections in line with EU standards, which are setting the golden standards. Also, uh, governments should engage in increasing digital competencies of public administration, but also increasing the level of digital literacy of general public. Uh, governments should publish and update data in open formats and e uh, services should be developed in user-centric manner. Uh, what is also important is to have uh, uh, governments uh, uh, that are guided by principles of data protection by design and data protection by default when designing uh, e-services. Uh, and very really important, governments should acknowledge the importance of accountability in cases of data protection violations. Just two recommendations uh, for the EU, and I'm uh, I'm done for the, this first. Uh, uh, part, uh, the EU should, con is, should continue to set golden stand standards for tackling emerging issues in the use of advanced technology. Uh, for example, this uh, regulation for uh, artificial, artificial intelligence that is in the process is really important one, and EU should insist on the same level of accountability in cases of data protection violations and incidents from Western ba Balkan countries as for the member states. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Danilo, for, for, for this um, yeah, sum up of, of the recommendations. And there were much more uh, in the paper. And I really can recommend to all the others just to, uh, to take a look on this one, um, just to, to see um, where uh, also we have uh, 
discussed or at the civil society forum recommendations and sometimes in other fora we also discuss recommendations to the governments especially uh, especially when it comes to harmonization and alignment um, so uh, I really can recommend this and now I would like to give the floor uh, to State Secretary uh, Banovic um, who I cannot see right now here on my screen. Ah, she's with us, wonderful. <laughs> so uh, Marina, um, <clears throat> the floor is yours. And uh, maybe before, sorry, before handing over to you, um, one remark and you, Danilo, focused already on, on this topic of public administration, which should be here and this discussion, the focal point uh, uh, of the discussion, but I think it's essential also when we talk about uh, how to 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 develop or talk about um, uh, the businesses and uh, all the others. So we have here a nice or a perfect bridge, I would say. But first, the floor is yours, Marina. So first of all, thank you for uh, the opportunity to be together with you all uh, today at this uh, panel. I think the initiative that has been uh, finished uh, was uh, really um, important and appreciated, I, I would say, uh, at least by uh, the administration I belong to. Uh, and I think it's very important to hear uh, the, the voice of um, civil sector in this uh, area and it's I've been for a relatively uh, short period of time in my position actually at all in public uh, administration but uh, uh, actually in this short period I realized actually that the uh, uh, civil sector is a relatively um, important player uh, in uh, processes of digital transformation of the society uh, in, in Montenegro in the country I'm coming from. Uh, so we are actually quite grateful on the, on the uh, policy remarks and recommendations that, ha that have been produced during the uh, session. And um, I, I, actually, uh, I've heard Danilo talking about um, uh, data protection as one of the uh, priorities that has been identified. And I can also uh, talk on the, uh, on the others. And I agree that this is a quite uh, important uh, topic. And I think there are several layers to it. One layer is a legal framework that uh, is uh, uh, started to be, be produced uh, around the, the, the region. In some countries uh, have been uh, better in that, some uh, been not so good. But as we all know, uh, a problem uh, a, a common problem in the region, I would say, is more about uh, law enforcement than on uh, law uh, production. So uh, design of the legal framework often exists uh, uh, and it's pretty good, but the law enforcement is a, a topic that uh, uh, administrations uh, should focus on, I would say. The second thing is uh, uh, GDP. PR uh, legislation uh, has been in place in Europe for about, uh, I don't know, two years or so. And it, uh, uh, in practice, it created a number of uh, challenges for uh, implementation. So it's quite complex as a, as a um, um, structure and it, uh, it brings a lot of, um, uh, I, 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 I would say it brought a lot of uh, things to be sorted out throughout the uh, the time and what I think should be uh, used by by the region is actually the practices uh, of other countries that that, that have been in uh, process for already some time and uh, we could just uh, use those practices and uh, try to uh, pursue them locally um, as um, fast as uh, possible. So uh, I would say uh, these are uh, the, the reflections related to uh, to the um, data protection. I would actually mention one more thing to it. It's about the awareness of citizens about data protection. I think in principle, the people from the region are not very sensitive to the uh, importance of personal data and importance of maybe not sharing them that easily. Uh, it's just part of the culture that the, this, uh, 
that people are not uh, sensitive uh, enough sensitive to, uh, to to this topic. It is just a cultural thing, and I think this is another aspect of uh, of the uh, of this topic that should be taken in consideration and that should be a common uh, a common. Uh, um, let's say task for both the government but also civil sectors for cooperation on raising the awareness of uh, uh, citizens on the topic uh, as such so uh, i don't know danilo have you spoken about other things <laughs> because for a moment i've lost the connection so uh, i i I'm, i know what is in the in the paper so i could go further and comment on other things but um, there was also uh, mentioned by Danilo the topic of uh, digital literacy, uh, which is uh, important to work on that one. Maybe you can comment on this one too, because this is digital skills is one of the important topics we have within the digital summit series. So yeah. maybe that would be good. Yes, uh, uh, really uh, uh, one uh, very, very important topic because digital transformation is not possible without digital skills. We can look at that in different layers or different uh, um, levels. So basically uh, what is whole world is facing the lack of uh, IT experts. Uh, on, on all levels, especially programming is an issue. We're talking about million programmers lacking in European Union. Uh, in a small Montenegro, we are, we are talking about 500 people missing in, in this uh, in this part of IT, I would say, uh, at this moment. So 650,000 people is lacking something like 500. It's almost 1% of the population uh, uh, should be educated uh, in programming so that we meet the demand that exists at the labor market at the moment. So uh, a big, big thing. And um, and I, I guess since the, the, the problem has its layers, it should be a Oh, now we are losing a bit of the connection again. So. I'm afraid that uh, the Secretary uh, Banovic has to uh, redial. So maybe uh, I would stop then here and we we'll just wait for the better connection again. And I would give the floor to, to Mihailo Vesovic uh, just to get a comment from the business uh, community's perspective, maybe. And uh, yeah. Um, the floor is yours and then we have a lot of uh, topics uh, I would give in the second round and especially once uh, Marina is back That's with us. <laughs> very, I'm very happy to have this kind of panel uh, to discuss this topic. I, I mean, this is uh, one of the, the probably best, uh, best stories, economical stories uh, in Serbia and in the region as a whole is the development of the IT sector, especially the IT uh, solution providers. Uh, just to give you a short overview of what, what's going on in Serbia, for example, that we have uh, the 5% of the Serbian annual GDP is uh, basically uh, from the sector of the ICT. Uh, there is about 100,000 people employed in the ICT uh, sector, which is 10% rise in 2020 that compared to 2019. Then you have 25 ICT companies. Uh, which are out of which 15,000 are, are about computer programming. And the IT sector exported uh, more than uh, 1.3 billion euros in, in last year. Uh, and one of the most important uh, parts of the IT segment that's most developed is energy management, e-health, Internet of Things, geo location, gaming, and so on. Uh, concerning the, the, the overall threats that we are facing, well, first of all, uh, I must say that financial sector is still most, uh, most uh, uh, exposed to the cyber attacks, which is uh, kind of normal. But then again, you see the banking and financial sector uh, investing the most in the IT protection, uh, not just uh, financially and technologically, but also with education of their management and uh, people working there. Second to that is production activities. As much as we like to work from home, as much as we like to use the digital tools, on the other hand, the production facilities 
are more and more exposed any, uh, every year. And on the third place, I must say that the energy sector is the, is the third one uh, that is most, uh, mostly affected. Also, the e-commerce uh, e-commerce sector is also affected, and the question what I like from the uh, uh, from the paper that you presented, Danilo, at the start is basically there is there are no borders uh, concerning the the data protection and cybersecurity, and that is probably something that uh, we all must uh, take with us and learn that there is no data protection inside one country and inside region. Of course, the state of the art uh, legislation is coming from the EU and uh, what is good news for the West Balkan uh, six uh, economies is that uh, we are part of the uh, part of that uh, European community uh, policy for the Western Balkans and we actually adopted it. Uh, and uh, I must say that the common regional market as, as, as West Balkan uh, six economies basically in, that, in its actual plan, uh, action plan that is adopted last last fall, uh, has a whole segment on digitalization processes in West Balkan, which include the digital protection, cyber protection, and uh, legislation. I must say that Serbia is probably uh, under the chapter of ten, according to the, what what is going on with the negotiation practice with the European Commission adopted the cyber security and data protection law as a law on information security a law on personal data protection and aside from that uh, we also adopted the law on e-commerce uh, more or less we have a state-of-the-art new state data uh, data center that is already used and there are a lot of operational mechanism as the government and the ministry of interior uh, has has its unit for fi fighting combating high technology crimes and so on. So, so we do have a lot of institution, a lot of legislation that should be uh, implemented. And hopefully the all Western Balkan countries in the process of accession will harmonize and use this uh, as a tool to import. But uh, nevertheless, what is our role, main role is uh, not just to talk about threats, and possibilities in the IT security, because the IT uh, whole, the whole IT security is also uh, making a market position for the, a lot of IT companies that is that are dealing with it. The, the chamber itself uh, here in Serbia is issuing the digital certificates. We are now doing the face recognition. We are complying to every rule of the cybersecurity and very much but what is what is missing is a small medium sized enterprises in the whole picture they don't have a lot of resources they don't have a lot of knowledge and a lot of technology so the government has to come in with the support of the most vulnerable part of the economy and the small medium sized enterprise to help them learn about threats to help them make the managers that are dealing with the data security and at least to buy a needed equipment programs or to be included in the different projects for the data security. They cannot do it by themselves. So I'm not worrying about the multinationals and banking sector because they are using the knowledge, the height, the state of the art security. And so, although they are also in a lot of problems as we can learn recently, but the small medium sized enterprises need to have help and support from the different institutions, from the education side to the financing side of the problem. Thanks a lot, uh, Mihailo, uh, for, for this intervention. And actually, I would like to give back to you, Danilo, um, the floor just to, to comment also on this uh, you've just heard or yeah, the feedback of the recommendations you've got. And I would like to add a question directly from the audience. Uh, there was a question, what is the reason uh, for the lack of digitalization? The network which I experienced in the Western Balkan countries were quite good. Uh, better than in many German provinces. It is uh, poverty, maybe, or is this uh, deficient uh, deficits in, in education? Um, so we tackled already some points uh, as, as regards digital skills and and literacy. But maybe you can also pick up this question and comment on that one. Thanks. Thanks to have done with yourself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I mean, uh, I would maybe like to comment on this um, uh, issue of awareness of the citizens regarding data protection issues. And I completely agree uh, with Secretary Marina that uh, awareness is lacking in the in the whole region. This is, as she said, cultural thing. 
because we were post-socialist societies where privacy was not a uh, big value. But uh, I, I have to say, we, we as a SHARE Foundation work a lot on, on this raising awareness of the citizen, and this is very important to do. Uh, but when we are talking about uh, data protection these days, there is no, not much citizens can actually do. So the whole power when we are talking about data is in the hand of companies and government. So uh, we can as citizen do as much as we want, but if uh, awareness of the governments and companies is not high, then we will, we will have a problem. I can maybe uh, state that, uh, for example, uh, our government uh, uh, procured uh, mass surveillance technology with uh, facial recognition software for mass surveillance of citizens in Serbia. And then they found out after doing uh, data protection input assessment and talking with our commissioner for data protection that they actually cannot use this technology. So we, for example, procured technology that we cannot use. So I, I think that uh, awareness of, of the government is, is also very important. And uh, 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 also, both uh, of the speakers agreed that uh, we have state-of-the-art uh, laws in Serbia, for example. Uh, and uh, yes, I agree, having laws is one thing, but as Marine also stated, uh, enforcement is a much bigger issue uh, in these countries. But I have to say, this is important step. step. So uh, everything we did in the last uh, year or two uh, when we were working on issues of data protection, massive leaks, we did using this new law on data protection, uh, protection that is basically translated uh, GDPR. So as I said, uh, yes, laws are the first step, but they're very, very important. And uh, regarding the question from the audience, I think maybe this is the better question for Marina and Kylo, but I, I wouldn't say, especially from Serbia, perspective that uh, digitalization uh, is lacking in Serbia. So we have really strong digital agenda uh, from, the, from the government. And uh, I would say massive, effort, uh, massive efforts are, are made. My perspective is that to find some challenges in this uh, uh, aspect, but I, I would say that it is going quite well. I don't know, maybe other speakers can answer also. I can join if you don't mind, Anya. Uh, what we've done two years, three years ago, we, we basically asked the companies, do they understand what is the digital transformation and uh, how to use uh, modern technology and do, do, are they aware of, and, and unfortunately the results are very comparable in the whole region, even in the, some parts of the European Union. Uh, although we, you, you're right, we have, a that you can say on the rural part of the Serbia, you have a better connectivity than in a lot of parts of uh, Germany, which is kind of absurd, which says that uh, we really did the infrastructure part, at least in Serbia, more or less solidly. But unfortunately, the companies are 50% of the companies do not have any agenda or plan, or we're not aware. I think that the last year and a half of this, uh, what we went all through, really speed speed up the processes and the awareness of the need for the digital uh, transformation of their businesses if they want to survive so it's been done a lot uh it's been done a lot mostly by the bigger companies with the e-commerce with the possibilities for you know and the startups that occurred basically on the digital platforms and models that they use from the start the problem is the traditional industry the problem is the expectation that the traditional industry, especially if you are not internationalized player or just local player, you, you believe that you can still work on uh, with the traditional level of, of this digitalization. And that's what we mostly did the awareness campaign of the fact that it's not a fact that you have to reach the foreign market, it's the fact that you can reach the local market cheaper to raise your productivity and to explain them that you should change the model of business according to the technology that is now not even in some expense, not exp too expensive at this point of time. So, so there is a lot of uh, a lot of companies that 
have plans, but they are not structured good. They believe that their digitalization is to have a web-based platform and maybe sell something online or have, have an email communication, which is not the point of the overall digitalization. On the other hand, the government provided a lot of new instruments and uh, there has been a lot of talk about the possibilities for digitalization. Nevertheless, uh, the money part uh, is where you have to invest in your digital security, in your digital tools for your company is something that should be, uh, I'm always, uh, we are fighting to have it, okay, 50%, 70% of the expenses should go on the burden of the components, but at least in the phase of where you have to push them to go through this process, you need to have some kind of, kind of subvention, sorry. Oh, it's perfect. Uh, thank you, Mihailo. Um, actually, I would uh, thanks for this uh, comment, uh, especially on how to include the, the, the small and medium sized businesses as we took once we talk about digitalization and economic development in the region by by far this is much the, the most important thing. Uh, besides uh, the fact of data security and, and all the others. Actually, Maria, I would like to give the floor to you, maybe to get a comment. Unfortunately, we lost you once we were at this point of uh, the demands uh, of the labor market in the region for IT experts, but maybe we can also bridge again and come back also to the recommendations uh, Danilo represented, uh, especially when it comes uh, to the topic of implementing the laws. Uh, so. As I understand, uh, there is, in fact, there are uh, the laws available, but the question is how to uh, to, to, to implement them. And uh, unfortunately, the picture is frozen, but maybe, Marina, you can switch off your video and then uh, it works. Because actually, I wanted to bridge and, and give the floor to Marina as she is uh, yeah, uh, with us from Montenegro, which is actually high and perfectly connected, I would say, uh, infrastructure wise. Um, so because this is maybe a point also to underline, it's not uh, so of course, there has to be improved the broadband connectivity within the region, which is also part of the uh, common regional market agenda and the action plan. But uh, much more it is to connect also maybe the small towns and uh, provinces or yeah, urban um, a rural areas that was the word i'm looking for so marina you're back with us perfect uh, i'm not sure <laughs> so i would like to give the floor to you and maybe you can uh, you can uh, also pick up the point on um how we can make sure uh, that the laws which are available are implemented because uh yeah. it's it's nice to have a good uh legal framework at, at as itself but uh, it, it should be work and Maybe you can also uh, elaborate a bit about how to, to include civil society organizations as we have the civil society forum and uh, maybe we should talk about much more the dialogue uh, among uh, politics, businesses and uh, civil society. Well, uh, I think uh, the uh, basically in this talk about uh, Let's talk about uh, uh, let's say pro the, the the legal acts that are uh, rather facilitating digitalization than uh, maybe do work on the side of protection, cybersecurity, and that area, which is, for example, law on e-governance, law on e-documents, and these documents they exist in the whole region for a very long period of time, and they are good laws, but they didn't find the uh, 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 they didn't find the implementation in pra practical use for different reasons. M the main reason is uh, uh, still that we as, a, as a citizens are not used uh, on uh, and don't trust to the electronic uh, documents more in equally as we trust, for example, the paper documents. I'm using this example because we're now changing the law on uh, e-document e and realizing that the law has been in place for uh, since 2004 and not big progress has been done there. Okay, there are some barriers that the, this law is now overcoming, but uh, still it, it, it could have been better. So uh, I, Danila, I have to go back again to the, uh, to the let's say individual responsibility and uh, in a way, um, uh, citizens, but 
even even more business uh, role in the whole uh, in this area um uh, and i think that that again the government also plays role here in terms of um, uh, incentivizing uh, uh, the actors uh, in order to uh, implement things. It's very hard uh, to be strict and to, uh, let's say, uh, forbid um, coming to the certain office to ask for a document and that way to pursue this digitalization. That would be pretty much uh, um, uh, difficult to, to implement in the practice. But uh, I've heard that kind of, of proposals too throughout the development of this law. However, uh, I don't think we're going to be that much uh, uh, strict on, on, on the topic, but uh, probably some uh, we will move in the, in the field of incentivizing uh, uh, citizens and businesses uh, to use uh, uh, digital tools in order to, or digital services, e-services, uh, in order to to, uh, uh, to 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 please their their needs. So uh, this is one one way of uh, uh, looking into the things, um, and I, I guess this could be um, this could be the way to go. Or actually, uh, this is how do we we play uh, and. Uh, regarding the question that derived through um, uh, from the audience, uh, I would say I would agree that uh, the, the big steps have been done in terms of digitalization in the whole region, in some countries, but more than in some others. What I think, Montenegro, is that it's not uh, equal in all sectors. There are sectors that are really good in, in it, like uh, tax administration, uh, education, um, maybe health. Uh, but in some other areas, it's not so uh, advanced as it should be, or it's not at the level it should be. So uh, a bit more of um, uh, of a um, uh, structural approach to the whole uh, to the system, to the whole topic should be probably applied. Um, so yes, that much for <laughs> this time. Sorry, the usual sentence, you have to unmute yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, thanks a lot uh, for, for, for this comment. Just let me uh, shortly give you the question, how we can include the civil society organizations uh, to maybe uh, boost a bit the process of, because obviously uh, we, we talk about trust, uh, trust in institutions, uh, trust uh, in uh, e-paper, e-documents. So there's a lot of things to do. The government has to do its own. Uh, work, but obviously we need other stakeholders to get involved. Is that the right? Yeah, I would say so. And uh, my belief is that this uh, involvement of all stakeholders should uh, be from the beginning of uh, development of the certain documents. And uh, um, I, this is what we actually implemented this year in uh, uh, working with the uh, working on some strategic documents that we are producing and we are doing the strategy on digital transformation, strategy on cybersecurity, program for attraction of digital nomads and the ICT investments and the document on e, e, uh, law on e-documents. And uh, uh, the decision was that, uh, and my strong belief is that uh, we need to involve stakeholders from the very beginning, from, the, be, from, be, from when we have a time plan. So this is what we did. And in our working groups in, uh, for each of these documents, uh, there, is, there are partners uh, from uh, civil society, but also from business association representatives, uh, academia representatives, and governmental representatives too. So uh, the, the intention is that these documents do not uh, belong, should not belong to the government. They are, they are belonging to the, uh, they should belong to all stakeholders. And I think this kind of um, uh, relationship and uh, approach uh, uh, can be reached only if, uh, if all partners are involved from the beginning of uh, uh, design of, of a document throughout its uh, uh, process of, of, 
um, uh, writing it down uh, to the moment in which it should be also uh, implemented. Uh, I, I see that this works, and uh, at least in the, uh, at this stage, which, and this is relatively initial stage for this document, there is a lot of energy and commitment from all sides to, to uh, work on this. And I would say through, to, through uh, looking at the problems from all different perspectives, will give also the instruments and the, the ways of, uh, of dealing with the, with the topics, with the challenges, with the issues, if you want. So uh, I think this kind of um, uh, in inclusive uh, way of um, uh, approaching all uh, social and uh, in this, mo in this uh, particular moment, digital topics uh, uh, can give a, re a result. Thank you very much, Marina. Um, maybe I can hand over to you, Danilo. Uh, maybe you can comment on that one. Uh, how you, as a representative of the civil society organizations, would like to see the involvement, because that was one of the recommendations that you should be involved, but the question is now how <laughs> to involve. Yeah. And as we hear, there are obviously some institutional settings already uh, to, to involve, but uh, once you have this recommendation, obviously there's a, maybe a lack uh, or a gap between, uh, yeah, the, the, the um, yeah, yeah, the idea, how to involve and who to involve maybe also. Yeah, thank you for that question. We, we talked quite a lot uh, regarding that topic in my working group, and uh, we made several things that uh, uh, civil societies can do uh, in order to improve services. For once, uh, we should advocate and monitor the process of adoption of legal framework. We should also watch the, uh, the oversee the implementation of adopted legislation. So this is the first thing. We should also alert the public in the cases of severe, severe violation of digital rights. Uh, and regarding to some of the uh, challenges, uh, uh, CSOs should offer uh, expertise to the government for designing e-services in user-centric manner. So this is there is expertise, at, but also the communities that civil societies are working with. Uh, we should also utilize open data increasingly and promote successful use of open data. This is really important in order to uh, continue to publish uh, data in open format. What uh, we, we should also do is raise, raise awareness on the importance of digital lit literacy of citizens and public servants and we should also strive to work uh, as, as CSOs uh, together on, on a regional level on these issues because we all have similar uh, issues. And uh, uh, last, uh, we also agree that uh, CSOs should raise internal capacities in or order to understand and deal with is is issues related to digitalization in public services. So uh, there's a lot of things that civil societies can do in order to help also as the private sector has uh, uh, so many knowledges that uh, can help government uh, uh, continue this field. We also made this interesting recommendation because as Marina said, the uh, lack of IT, uh, IT experts, especially in public services, services is really important issue because uh, governments don't have enough money to keep uh, IT experts. Uh, so this is very important because they can earn much more money in, in private sector. So uh, we have this uh, recommendation that uh, uh, governments should find innovative solutions to keep high quality professionals and build external partnership with private sector. So this is the only way uh, it's really difficult, you know, to, to have someone with the salary of, you know, five less than in, in private sector. Thank you, Danilo, for building this bridge. Uh, actually, that was one of the points I wanted to, to take uh, on uh, uh, on the agenda as well. And uh, actually, I would like to, to, to give uh, the word to Georgia Krivokapic uh, because there was a question regarding the digital common market before I hand over to Mihailo to comment on that one. Can you unmute, please, um, Georgia Krivokapic? And Georgia, you have to unmute yourself too. Ah, you don't have a mic. Okay, so then I read out your question. Perfect. And uh, <laughs> I, um, uh, the question for was, uh, what can we do to enhance uh, Western Balkans digital common market? 
uh, do you think that such market is needed and what are potential advantages? So it's somehow, so we started already to talk about uh, the, yeah. the, the, the borders uh, not any longer existing, especially if we talk about uh, digitalization, but maybe you can again, uh, just pick just, up this just, question. The first point is uh, what is mostly needed for the region is basically to be uh, more competitive and more productive in order to uh, get closer to the European economies that we are all striving uh, to become part of the European Union. So the digitalization is one of the means how to raise the productivity and competitiveness uh, of the companies from, from all the region. Second thing is, I think that the digitalization um, and the regional concept or aspect of it is basically a great instrument uh, for the regional connection. And uh, to build a unique economic area, you have to have the instruments that are in line uh, on the whole region and not just uh, on the legislative part, but on, also on the technological part. If you want to have, uh, I don't know, uh, unburdened, uh, uh, no, no stops at the borders, you have to uh, get in line the, the, or implement a digital solution of free custom that basically you apply before your, your truck starts moving from, I don't know, Macedonia to Serbia or Albania, Bosnia, Montenegro, and then just to have a, uh, a short check on the on the border because one of the biggest problems is, is the transport the transport and uneven procedures in the different countries and especially exchange of the information if you have the uh, the different uh, administrative parts or governmental parts that need to be to check either from sanitary or veterinary uh, 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 certificates because most of the goods is uh, production or food products uh, you need to have them uh, in the same manner digital, digitalized and in the same manner they have to uh, be uh, uh, unique and in that sense the digitalization is, could be a great tool uh, for faster integration in the region and shortening and harmonization in general harmonization of the procedure you cannot lie to the application and uh, if you have the same aspects of our same applications on different sides of the borders, it's easily to connect them and to have uh, much less administrative barriers, which is one of the problems. And the third thing that maybe we didn't mention, but in general, the whole region suffers for suffers from the migration uh, a problem. And one of the aims of the digitalization, one of the aims of the establishing of different tools for the I, uh, ICT companies is basically to and make them able to, to prevent the, the brain brain drain because the average salary in the IT company of the software engineer in Serbia is around 2000 euros and concerning it's basically more than twice uh, higher than average salary on the other fields. So the, the reason for those young people to move uh, to the another country, are, there are less and less reason and it, especially if they can make their own businesses and work on the global market. That's one of the ways how to stop the migration. Even we faced a lot of uh, our people that were working abroad the last year and a half while they were working from home because of this, <laughs> coming back to Serbia, if they have a good digital connection, they basically were able to work for any international company all over the world. And that brought a lot of uh, younger people home back home. Thank you, Mihailo, for, for, for this statement. And uh, I just before we, we have somehow already come to a closing, I would uh, ask the audience, once you have a question, you have now the chance to put the question in the Q&A, and then we can also pick them up and uh, ask our experts and panelists on that one. Uh, if you do not do so, okay. <laughs> I think we have a lot of topics uh, we, we can discuss further and uh, actually also uh, would like to, to ask you to comment again uh, on, uh, because uh, the topic on how to prevent or how to keep experts uh, in the region, uh, for sure, that was a question from the very beginning and uh, of this uh, of these today's sessions. And uh, it's like a red line uh, in all these uh, discussions, I would say. Um, this is one thing, but as I understood, and that's why I would, again, uh, Danilo, 
pick up this uh, recommendation you, you mentioned of innovative and creative solutions to keep IT experts uh, with the public administration, because that was our starting point of, uh, uh, of uh, that panel, that uh, public administration and the digitalization of public administration uh, can, can help a lot also to, to, uh, to, to uh, get transparency and processes. And so, uh, but we cannot discuss all this wonderful digitalization without having the experts uh, to uh, produce the systems and to keep the systems running, right? And also uh, to, to, uh, to help uh, to protect the data. Uh, so um, did you have, uh, any ideas maybe how this innovative partnership between public uh, services and uh, and the business could look like or is that would, would be something we should discuss and elaborate further in specific dialogue between governments and 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 cso's yeah we didn't have a specific solution mm -hmm. it's a really difficult question i mean how how, how to keep uh, it experts in, in public sector but uh, as i said uh, uh, this is maybe more questions for, for Marina working in the government, but uh, the, the rules for public servant, servants are really strict. So today it's really difficult to keep uh, IT experts with such a strict rules, maybe give them some more freedom in their work or, or something like that. This is what comes to my mind. But as I said, this is this is really difficult question. Yeah, that was my next idea, Maria. Maybe you can comment on that one and maybe Maybe there are already uh, discussions among the, guy, the, the economies in the region about this uh, issue, and maybe that would could be also part of the dialogue on uh, uh, within the digital summits. I don't know. So uh, yes. maybe we can take this point on the list. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. the discussions. Uh, definitely, uh, the, the, it's it's true that. Uh, that uh, we cannot go further into uh, digitalization without having experts uh, in, in keeping experts in the government. So uh, that is one thing where there is a lack of experts of a certain uh, kind. And when we are talking about digitalization, it is exactly of ICT background. And even if you find them, they need specific skills to develop in order to to be operative in their work. Once they are operative, then they leave. They leave either for local market or they leave for international market. Nowadays, we are not uh, in ICT segment, we are competing on global market. Although people are, as Mikhailo mentioned, sitting in Serbia or Montenegro or Bosnia, they are working overseas. And uh, this it's hard to compete. So you're not benchmarking only with the companies within the Montenegro, but with uh, uh, the companies on the global scene. So it, it's a big, big uh, uh, question mark how to deal with this question. And uh, I would say that uh, regarding the experts themselves, it is uh, uh, to, to redefine the benefit packages for this kind of uh, employees. Uh, the rules are strict, but uh, if it is fair and transparent and if it regards certain segments of uh, uh, governmental uh, government servant uh, public servants it's it's possible to do something in that area another thing uh, is uh, educational programs that you would offer to the employees uh, 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 to ICT experts uh, to uh, if especially they are younger employees so they could get a quite uh, advanced uh, educational program and maybe uh, commit to stay with the government for next five years in order to, um, let's say, pay uh, the, the investment uh, in, into the uh, knowledge. These are the uh, lines uh, uh, in which we do think. And regarding the uh, develop, uh, let's say, uh, cooperation between business and the government in this area, it's uh, mainly outsourcing. So. Uh, there are areas of the work in ICT segment that can be out outsourced to the to the um, to, to business companies that are working uh, uh, in the in the in the area. Here, I would just uh, uh, there was at the beginning uh, man, uh, man, uh, note on uh, 
cyber security and uh, I think that these areas particularly uh, vulnerable in terms of expertise in all countries and these are the most uh, uh, demanded uh, the people in in the demand in demand in terms of labor market uh, and it's very hard to and it's complex to educate them and uh, it's easy to lose them and this is a common problem that all the economies are suffering with and I would say that cybersecurity should be one of the first uh, uh, segment that would could we could think of um, uh, regional uh, integration over. Uh, and uh, I mean the, the type of the uh, topic is uh, doesn't know knows about the borders uh first of all and um, it can be managed it it doesn't have to be a, a locally managed it can be uh, managed from another center of excellence situated somewhere else so it's i'm not talking just about the usual and common and already existing collaboration between the centers for uh, combating cyber uh, threats but uh, maybe even uh, uh, some regional structure that could uh, uh, unify the all uh, strengths of all countries and really address uh, the problem uh, from uh, from a very um, high level let's say uh, in all sense and this does not mean that we do not we would not keep the current structures that already exist yes we would and um, they would have enough job anyhow but the the the, uh, the this area becomes so sophisticated that it's really very very difficult for countries small countries as all we are uh, to to re, uh, uh, to adequately face it. Thanks a lot. Um, as we have left two minutes uh, for this panel, and I was asked to close uh, in time. Uh, I actually would like to, 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 to give Danilo the floor for the last remark and would like to ask you also to pick up uh, or to refer to the question, to the last question we received in the, uh, in the Q&A, which is about the role of civil society. Uh, civil society has an important role in protecting and enhancing the human rights and economic rights. It looks like in the Western Balkans there's a sensitivity uh, in this regard, more in the freedom of for information issues rather in the data protection. Do you think that more active role from the civil society in data protection in regards uh, to the interaction with different public institutions would help in the raising of uh, awareness in this regard? And so the floor is yours, two minutes, and then we have to close the panel. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'll be brief. Uh, thank you for this question. I, I, I completely agree with everything uh, noted here absolutely that uh, communication interaction with public institution is super important i can speak for our own experience uh, in regards to data protection so we have really good communications with uh, a commissioner for data protection with national cert which is national computer emergency response team and with ministry of telecommunications which is competent ministry when it comes to law of uh, law on uh, uh, digital security. So just I, I, I'm, I'll mention this example from the beginning when during pandemic uh, uh, credentials for uh, accessing the uh, COVID-19 information systems were released on the internet. So we, this was the Easter, uh, I remember, and we contacted the vote commissioner, national certain ministry, and I have to say after in less than an hour uh, these credentials were removed. So this was really quick reaction from the uh, state authorities because we developed really good communication with them over the years. So I can only completely agree with, with the question. Thanks a lot. And so uh, we have at the quarter past five and I unfortunately have to close this panel. Many thanks uh, to all the panelists, many thanks uh, to uh, to, to, to the organizers to, for arranging this panel. And as I started, especially in this composition, because obviously this is a topic uh, where we need the politics, we need the businesses, and uh, of course we need the, the CSOs uh, to support and to, to raise awareness, obviously, when it comes to data protection for the people and to awareness on the people's side as well as uh, on the administration side. 
So again, many thanks and uh, have a nice day. And there's a short break and afterwards we have the last panel, I think, um, for this today's session. So stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat>